person creative potential capable of bringing about a knowledge-based economy. Street battles between rioters, opposition supporters and Guinean security forces have forced President Alpha Conde to return to Conakry ahead of schedule. And Russia has announced plans to deliver surface-to-air missiles to the embattled Bashar al-Assad regime, prompting fears of an outbreak of a proxy war. Well, that's your bulletin for tonight. Thanks for the pleasure of your company and enjoy the rest of our programs. It is one of for leaders of the continent who march into Addis Ababa in an upbeat mood, hoping to build on the rich legacy of the past 50 years. They were all queuing up to commemorate the formation of the Organization of African Unity, which later transformed into the African Union. Its birth 50 years ago was pioneered by heroes and heroines of our time who fought hard to turn the tide toward Africa, a continent that continues to pay heavily for the neglect and exploitation by the imperial government.
they wielded power and authority in a rather unorthodox fashion, legitimizing the African struggle for recognition and respect. African Renaissance was the chosen team of the anniversary summit at the AU headquarters. They are the continent's leaders explore efforts in redefining the momentum in shaping the African agenda of 2063. Prime Minister Ede Marin Hesselein, Chairperson of the African Union, Excellencies Head of State, sitting and former, and indeed special guests, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, ladies and gentlemen. The 25th of May, 1963, was a truly momentous day in Africa. It certainly marked the establishment of the organization of African unity, but there is much more than symbolism to this day. It was the culmination of over a century of Pan-Africanist struggle to assert the dignity of African people. It showcased the desire of unity by the African people and their desire to overcome the balkanization of the continent. It was a repudiation of negative stereotypes and racialist interpretations of African history. Indeed, it underscored the common commitment of Africans to achieve freedom and end decolonization and apartheid in the continent. The establishment of the OEU was about Africans taking pride in the continent. It is accordingly quite in order to mark 25th of May as a special day on the continent. A golden jubilee is nevertheless a very special milestone. This is attested to by the high turnout of African heads of state and government in this occasion. It is also attested to by the presence of heads of state and government from all parts of the world. Indeed, the Secretary General of the United Nations is coming to Addis Ababa for the third time this year. The special nature of the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the OAU is also borne out by the extensive number of activities and events to mark the occasion. African intellectuals have deliberated on the true importance of the theme of the celebrations. Yesterday, we had an intergenerational dialogue with children and youth. Our women have marked the occasion just as our workers, business, artists, faith-based groups, have mobilized themselves in celebration. Today is, however, only the beginning of a year-long celebration of the African Renaissance. The purpose of this celebration goes beyond the sheer joy achieving a major milestone. We are acknowledging the contribution of African diaspora to the framing of the Pan-Africanist Pan ideals. We are commemorating the achievements of the key objectives of our founding fathers, including freedom, decolonization, and the end of racial domination. We are celebrating Africa's heroes and heroines who articulated Pan-Africanist ideals, led the struggle for independence, and where the leader Raoult became focused on unwavering liberation fighters. We are, of course, also marking the economic and social progress that Africa has made since 1963. In spite of all odds, we are indeed underscoring the transformation of the OAU to the African Union at the turn of the century. The world is now a different place from what it was 50 years ago. Economic power is no longer concentrated in Western Europe and North America. The concept of North and South are no longer meaningful. The rise of the South from Asia, the Gulf, Latin America, 
Mix now.